previously on Beggars and Choosers. Two hours ago, Parker Meridian, the star of LGT's hit comedy Parker's Pals, was shot to death. The murder occurred during the shooting of a fictional kid attempt in the TV miniseries based on the life of reputed Russian mobster Nikolai Nikki Krasnikov, who, in a bizarre twist, was present during the incident. Are you sure you're going to be okay? Yeah, I'll be fine. Well, you could come home with us, you know. Mm -hmm. Those were real bullets in those prop guns, Nikki, and they were meant for you. Parker was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. An innocent man was killed. You fucked up my miniseries, Nikki. You fucked up my Tuesday night, and you fucked me up. Guess what? Casey Lennox comes from an upper middle class suburb in Connecticut. Her father's an orthodontist. She was a debutante. She went to Sarah Lawrence without the benefit of financial aid and wrangled her way into LGT through an outreach program for underprivileged minorities. She proceeded to wow senior management and mow down her colleagues, the latest being me. So sorry, Casey, the jig's up. I just couldn't stand it another minute. Casey? Everything Lori just said is true. Ricky, baby, how are you? No, I just saw the train. Yeah? Three picture deal. Anything there for me? Uh... Anonymous? <laughs> hey, you're play, honey. I'll get your massage and call me on the cell phone. No, it is an unbelievable diet. My gardener just quit. He's going to Paramount? I thought he was talking to Disney. I can't take this business anymore. I uh, moved to Oregon and raised chinchillas. Her trainer? Oh! No, no, you're breaking up. I can't hear you. I'm losing you. Yeah, I'm heading into the canyon. Oh. I have to go to another awards benefit this month. Oh, stop complaining. You Ooh. dance with every female producer oh, there. Oh, yeah, that's because it's pilot season. You know, if you're not going to pick up the show, the least you can do is dance with them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. You know something? Mm -hmm. You have been very feisty since you got the report back on your sperm. Oh, strong swimmers, Cecile. That's what Dr. Wackenhut called them, strong swimmers. Yes, oh. and I'm very happy for you, hon, but you know what oh. that means? That means that they're going to have to retrieve some of my eggs to examine, and I hear that that's not quite as much fun. Well, what the hell? Oh, Honey! Three, what, um, yeah, hey, honey. is this what you guys talk about when I'm not around? Sperm and eggs? <laughs> it's not what I pictured. Oh, my daddy. Oh, hi. Oh. I thought you were a Kenyan ranch. Oh, I was, I was. But, you know, I sort of did all the healing I could do there. Yeah. And so I'm just going to kind of spend some time here and, you know, work things through. And... Yeah. You mean here, L.A., or here, here? Here, here, here. Here? here. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. You know, because Ernst, um, he was my nurturer at Canyon Ranch. He suggested that, you know, like that we do our best healing around familiar things. And I thought, what's more familiar than you guys? Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Yeah. You know, I just I feel safe here. So. Well, I'm glad you feel safe here. Thank you. Oh, you don't mind me bringing home my laundry, do you? Huh. No, it's, it's kind of reminded me when I was in college and I used to come home and visit. I'm glad you feel safe enough to bring your laundry home. Yeah. So, um, mm. anyhow, I'm, you know, I'm beat, so okay. I'm just, uh, I guess that I'll see you in the morning, okay. huh? Yeah, all right. Oh, good. Oh, and we are, like, totally out of chocolate syrup. And I'll pick some up tomorrow. Thanks, Mom. I love you, Clyde. I love you, Yeah, too. yeah, night-night, hon. We are in such trouble. Oh, my shit.
As you know, I had planned to bury the Krasnikov Mini in December. Yes, but that's before the stroke of good fortune, Rob. Stroke of good fortune? Parker died. Yes, I know, Margaret, but now we've got the most notorious miniseries in history. Well, I'm glad he didn't die in vain. Oh, God, look, what happens during premiere week every fall? The networks trot out their new series. We all kill each other off. The public is confused. Nothing gets numbers. The shows end up in the we toilet. We run the Mini during premiere week. Oh, hmm? I was just about to say that. Everyone watches us. Let the other network shows kill each other. I was just about to say that. In week two, everyone shot their wad. Everyone's in the habit of watching us, and we premiere our new shows. Interesting. Rob, I was about to say Ex something. And Except for the little wrinkle that we don't have a star. No, we recast, Marty. Malcolm, once we commit to this, insurance no longer covers our losses. We're at a real risk if we don't have a bankable lead. So I take it we've worked through our grief over Parker's death. All we're saying is that no actor in his right mind would turn this down. A major miniseries during premiere week. Oh. Is that what we're saying? You no, know, I'll say this about Casey's idea. Look, could we get something Brandy? straight here, Rob? I you want know, to tell you something. No, you know, when Judd Moore ran this place, it me. is the kind of thing he would have done. That's true. Judd always said there was no such thing as bad publicity. Marty, I want you to float this premiere week idea past the affiliates. See what they think about it. And Malcolm, mm. try to come up with some new casting for the mini. I mean, and let's try to make some sense this time, okay? Yeah, good thinking with the premiere week, Casey. Rob, mm. I think you should know domestic bliss may be history. Mm. Oh, geez, I'm sorry to hear that, Marty. I thought you and Gene had worked through the pumps. No, the TV show. It's a segment on the CBS morning shows. Yeah, like yeah. Pamela Marston. Yeah, yeah. Perky uh, makes throw pillows out of old cat hair. Yeah, and makes millions with her cookbooks, china patterns, linens, greeting cards. Yeah. She's a cottage industry with an enormous following, and her deal's coming up at CBS. Well, she'll re-up with them. Eh, maybe not. Well, she wants a longer segment. And with everything working on the CBS show, they're reluctant. Anyway, her agent called me to send out a feeling. You're kidding. With us? Crazy, huh? So what if we offered her a longer segment? See Absolutely. what happens. Absolutely. Fly her in for a meeting. She's in town. Yeah. You want me to set something up? Sure. Well, you know something, Marty? Maybe things are finally beginning to go our way. <laughs> That's a kiss of death if I ever heard it. Nobody. It was my idea. Oh, come right what does it matter whose idea it was? It was a good one. No, no, I hate her getting credit for an idea. Oh, it wasn't even hers. No, it's all What? Agent Cuddy. FBI. <laughs> I already paid the fucking parking tickets. This won't take much of your time. No, I did the time. 24 goddamn hours in the hole. You do have a screening room, don't you? After the Meridian shooting, the cameras kept rolling. That is the correct term, isn't it? Rolling? Yes, yes, that's what we, uh, that's what we call it. I want you all to look very carefully at this tape and tell me if any person on the screen looks out of place. Okay, great. Officer? I hear your boss has a message for me. I beg your pardon? Nikki. Nikolai Krasnikov is in his own movie. What? He must have done a cameo. Look at him. The camera loves him. Ah. Well, he, um... He certainly has a... A, a presence. Huh? I'll say. Wow. Hello, lunch. Would you at least consider it? Oh. All right, Nikki Krasnikov playing Nikki Krasnikov. No, Laurie, if I'm going to revive this mini, I'm going to do it without a gimmick. But Rob, it's on the front page of every yeah. newspaper in the country. How could you turn this down? Because he's not an actor, okay? He's a gangster. Yes, but with incredible screen appeal. You should have seen the women in the room, Rob. Even that, that, that FBI agent, everyone was, like, lubricating or something. Lubricating? Yes, yes, Rob, it's a figure of speech. I mean, I'm well, just saying. Look, Laurie, we have done everything that we could possibly do to fuck up this mini. I mean, we spent 400000 on the wrong writer. We hired a maniac as a director, and we used a sitcom actor to play the lead. And we managed to get him killed in the process. Rob. So, don't whine, Laurie. Aww. I'll be 
damned. Little Ta-da. people out of eggs. Are these adorable or what? What? <laughs> Rob, Pamela Marston's here. Oh, oh gee. What? No, no, you're kidding me. Mm-hmm. Ryan said he was trying to pitch her to you. She's so straight. She's so uptight. She's a tight-ass fucking bit. Hi. Oh, Miss Marston. I'm such a big fan, really. Oh, thank you. How sweet. Oh, such Ms. Marston, for you years, come really. Oh, it's just really. Wonderful. Hi. So nice to meet you. Nice office space. You know, some brightly colored throws would bring these sofas to life. Ah. Yes. I make a lovely little thing out of discarded socks. Socks? Yeah. Wow. (laughs) You know what else? If you were to arrange some of these things in smaller groupings, Mm -hmm. it makes it homier. Oh, well, really, I'll I'll try that then. Oh, please, sit down. Oh, Oh. I was just um, watching your show about the egg people. Oh, my, yes. CBS could hardly handle the mail after that one. Boy, I'll tell you, we wouldn't mind generating a response like that to our morning show. Well, I see no reason why you can't. You mean besides making throw pillows, you could also make a soap purse out of a sow's ear? I have, and worn it to the theater that night. That's a little joke. Uh, Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Very little. (laughs) Uh. You know, um, Mr. Malone, Mm. may I be candid? Mm. I feel a little stifled at CBS. There's more to me than eight minutes of airtime. I'd like to go deeper. Deeper? Yes, into the culture. Proper place settings, well-tended lawns, holiday theme parties. I want to give America an alternative to the nastiness of the headlines and the collapse of the family. Yeah, sort of a return to the 50s. The 1450s, the Renaissance, oh. huh? When, when grace and charm are what matters. Well, God knows TV could use a little more grace and charm. Well, why not? Life is a great deal about presentation. How something looks ultimately is so important, don't you think? Hmm. And how does LGT look to you? A little bit like home. So tired. You just got up an hour ago. I know. I just, I find being conscious sort of draining. Audrey, I know that this is a painful time for you, but um, have you given any thought to the future? Oh, mommy, I am just trying to deal with the present right now. I know. It's just that, well, you gave up the beach house, and I was wondering if you had thought about where you might want to live eventually, for instance. Oh, well, you know, I really think that I just need to heal right now, and then I can deal with all that other stuff, you know? Right. Well, uh, you know, how about your finances? We could take a look at your books, come up with a little budget. I don't have any money. Didn't Parker pay you for running his production company? Well, yeah, but I spent all that. Audrey, that must have been thousands and thousands of dollars. It was cash, off the books. Why are you obsessing about money? Mm. Oh, I see. Sounds like you just want me out of here. No, sweetheart. It's just that part of the healing process is to imagine a life outside your grief, and I'm just trying to help you do that. We won't have to worry about money. I'm sure that Parker has taken care of me in his will. And so you don't have to worry. I won't be a burden to you anymore. Honey, you are not a burden to me. Okay, look, you know what? Let's let's not talk about this anymore, okay? Thank you. No, because this is just... This is really stressing me out. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, sweetie. Mommy, you think um, you think you could make me a little egg sandwich, please? Sure. Even bigger load than usual. <clears throat> you know, by the end of pilot season, I think one shoulder is a good inch lower than the other. <laughs> Rob, while you were on with New York, Pamela Marston called. She asked if you could drop by. 
drop by. On your way home. Oh, shit. Cecile and I were going to go see Charade at the Newark tonight. Again? Yeah. You think I can get out of it? Which one, Cecile or Pamela Morris? I mean, what does she want to see me about anyway? I mean, we're in the middle of negotiations with her. Hold the elevator. I don't know. She said it was important. Okay, okay. Where am I supposed to drop by to? Her suites at Peninsula Towers, 519. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Cecile, it's me. Look, um, I'm running late. It's open! Pamela? Rob Malone. I knew that. Who the hell else would it be? <laughs> She's Pamela. Um... You want a drink? Ah, you're having a cocktail. Actually, it's called Pamela on the Rocks, except no rocks. <laughs> <laughs> and um, what was it that you wanted to see me about? Seven o'clock. Hotel suite. Woman greets you in a row. Offers you a drink. Do the math, Rob. Pamela. Ooh, don't call me that. Well, Pam. Oh, no, um, no, no. Sit down, sit down. You want to know a secret? <clears throat> it's not my real name. You want to know what my real name is? Mary Edith Kenny. What do you think about that? Well, you know, a lot of people have stage names. Sure. You want to take that jacket? Well, yeah, yeah, no, I'm fine. Um, you know what I think? about Pamela Marston. <clears throat> I can't stand her. Yeah. I think she's a uptight little twat. Ah. You know, you want to lose the shirt and well, and jockey shorts? I'll <clears throat> bet you wear jockey shorts, right? Mm. Color coordinated. I'll tell you what. Why don't you come by the office tomorrow morning? Because I've got to get going on you. Big old square, Rob Malone. I know all about you. Catholic boys' school, <laughs> see nuns, Ivy League scholarship. You know, in Boston, there were two kinds of Irish. My kind Ooh. and your kind. And your kind always wanted to do it with my kind. <laughs> Isn't that right, Mr. Malone? Well, you know something? Why don't you order some dinner? Good night's sleep, and we'll talk in the morning. You think I'm drunk, don't you? I'm not drunk. Well, you think I'm single, and I am not single. I know. You're married. So am I. Who gives a shit? I do. Really? Is mm. that why you haven't left yet? I'm leaving. We'll talk tomorrow when you're feeling a little better. Well? As William Shakespeare said, hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. Wasn't Shakespeare. It was William Congreve. Ever the Yale man. I'm sorry. Well, whoever said it happens to have been right. Women don't like to be turned down. You blew it, Rob. Did I? Yes. You could have saved LGT some big bucks tonight. Good night. Rob, I swear, I did a 30 share. Oh, Casey screwed with the numbers. I, she, she forged the memo. I swear. Good evening, Vopona. How the hell did you get in here? Dumb question. Oh, Nikki. I thought I made myself clear to you. You said you were not going to see me. 
You said nothing about me seeing you. God, it's bullshit. You breaking into my house? You don't, you don't respect what I said? Let me tell you what bullshit is. That I am sneaking around in the dark, hiding from Stenka Pifkin's men, like a woman. That I cannot stay away from you. This is your fault. Please. I was never like this before I met you. I am at war, Wapone. <laughs> and I seem to have lost my stomach for it. Then end the war, Nikki. <laughs> Just hand him the dogs. Why not? Why not, Nikki? Just walk away from it. You know, the old Nikki. We've already crushed Stinka Beefkin. <sighs> now I stop and think. What would Valpona say? I cannot conduct my business this way. Then don't conduct your business, Nikki. And do what, huh? Give my men two weeks' notice, start a little uh, mail order, route a of business. We've had this conversation, Nikki. I'm... I'm exhausted, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm in the middle of pilot season here. You have to go. Poster girl for smart women, dumb choices. What does that mean? Oh, Nikki, you know what that means. that the painters are out of here by next week. They're doing the whole place, right? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, and it's all being paid for. I mean, you combine that with the discount that you're getting for, uh, for... Leasing the house of a guy who got murdered. <laughs> and you're saving a bundle. <laughs> you don't want me asking, but who's paying for all this renovation? Oh, well, you know, it's not really relevant. You do know about the disclosure laws in California, Myra. You know, if you must know, uh, the people who catered the um, little reception here um, after uh, Parker's funeral. And why would they pay? I, they were feeling terribly guilty. Yes. What for? Uh, you know, I, I really don't know. <laughs> Myra, you really don't want to hear from Charisma's legal department. Believe me. Well, after the reception, uh, when they were cleaning up, uh, his urn was on a table over here, and one of the caterers knocked the urn over and spilled the ashes. He panicked and uh, started his vacuum and... Parker got vacuumed? Oh, I should have told you. Oh, I'm so sorry. My God. Uh, oh, Miss Malone. Audrey. How you doing? I'm, uh, I'm healing. Healing's good. Yeah. I'd like to spend a few minutes here with Parker. Oh, well, I, I, um, I have to go. I have to present an offer in the colony. I, uh, bye. I was going to scatter Parker's ashes over the entrance to Caesar's palace, but then I had a better idea. Still in a vault. No. I'm gonna scatter them here. Off the deck. Audrey, I don't think that's such a good idea. Why? Well, for one thing, the zoning laws in Malibu 
I'll prohibit dumping ashes into the ocean. That'd be ridiculous. Audrey, it's, 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 not, it's not ecological. What could be more ecological than returning someone's remains to the universe? Goodbye, Parker. May your spirit be commended to the ocean. Oh, Jesus. There's nothing in there. How, how could there be nothing in there? Well... Do, do we get ripped off by the funeral home? Well... Um, they charge us a fortune for cremation. I don't, I don't understand. Audrey, maybe there's another explanation here. What? Well, perhaps Parker has transcended to another level. Transcended to another level? You mean like reincarnation? Beyond reincarnation. Sometimes with really large souls, uh, they pass on into the cosmos. What are you talking about? Audrey, that large a talent cannot just vanish. He's still here. In spirit, he's just taking a hiatus. That's it? That's the entire list of Krasnikov candidates? Rob, between the guys who are unavailable, the guys who are wrong for it, and the guys who don't want to get shot, it's a short list. Besides, in my opinion, we keep overlooking the obvious. Malcolm, I've already been over this with Lori. Look, look, I had this blown up from the dailies, okay? The guy jumps off the screen. Okay, listen, we're gonna do it the right way this time. We're going with an established director and an established dramatic star, okay? Well, I think you're making a big mistake here, Rob, but hey, your call. Hey. Yep. Do you wanna hear something weird? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Pamela Marston. Yeah? She hit on me. Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> Pamela Marston? Yeah. I always thought she was a tight ass. Uh, invited me up to her hotel suite last night. She comes out in her bathrobe carrying a tumbler full of scotch. I love it. What did oh. you do? Come on, what do you think I did? Well, I certainly hope you didn't turn her down. I mean, we are <laughs> in negotiations with her after all. <laughs> no, I mean, the interesting thing is, here I am, head of LGT, running a network, and all of a sudden, I'm begging her to come to work here. I mean, she's in the power position because she knows we need her show. So you got sexually harassed, huh? God, you know something? I think I did. I'm gonna call Sandra Cassandra's lawyer. She'll get you your own TV series. Mm. But do we really want to be in business with this lady? Rob, are you kidding? She'd pull our morning show right out of the crapper. Mm. Look, Rob, it's... It's really not that big of a deal, so you fuck her a couple of times. I am kidding. Mm. But I'm also sort of curious. Aren't you? Well, about what? What'd she be like in bed? What are you... Academically curious, of course. Mm. She's not my type. Now, he... is my type. I'm in crisis. Oh, you've come to the right place. Hold on. Todd, it's Dr. Gadant. Pick me up another 200 shares of Fiber Octocon if it goes below 138. Right. Yo, Lori, so what's happened? Well, I thought I'd already worked through all this when I realized that I, I do have real feelings for Nikki Krasnikov, but I have to admit, I hate the thought of Brad not being in my life. I mean, my God, Rick, we've been through all the wars together and we've... I mean, it's not like I can count on Nikki, you know? I mean, my God, the guy's a gangster, you know? I just, I, I hate feeling so fucking vulnerable. I mean, I feel like I'm in, I'm in high school or something, you know? I thought Brad was seeing, um, 
Casey. No, no, no. That's just because he thinks I'm seeing Nikki. Oh, Brad. Brad is such a competitive asshole. It's actually kind of endearing. But on the other hand, I hate to think that I'm moving away from Nikki right now. I mean, the poor guy, he's going through a crisis of his own. Well, well, why don't you um, process your feelings for a minute there, Lloyd? Nikki thinks he's losing his edge. Do you think that makes him less attractive to me? Oh, my God. Oh, my God, I just had this horrible thought. Good, 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 good. Go with it, go with it. What if I'm losing my edge? <laughs> what if that's what all this indecision, all this fear of relationships is about? Maybe that's why Casey is still around. Rick, there was a time I would have gotten rid of her in a week. Oh, my God, I'm getting soft. Well, well you know, Lori, there's a natural progression to things. As we mature, we tend to develop a more compassionate nature. You're on, on one side of the cycle, and Casey, she, she's on the other, that's all. What kind of fucking psychobabble is that, Rick? You're phoning this in. Ra rage is good, Laurie. Rage is good, good. Let me absorb your rage. Ah, you know what, Rick? No, no, no. No, fuck you, okay? Fuck you. Don't even try billing me for this. I'm gonna know what hit you, sweetheart. Oh, Irwin, I don't know. One day she's selling the network to Barry Diller, the next day she's selling it to the Sultan of Brunei. I mean, it's really, I mean, it's driving me a little crazy. Pamela Marston's here. Oh, yeah, I gotta run. <clears throat> Ms. Marston, come on in. Ms. Marston, I thought we were way beyond that point. Okay, look, I know we're in negotiations, but I really think there are a few things that we should get straight here. By all means. Okay, um, please. I just want to be very, very clear here. Uh, when we, if we close this deal, I would expect our relationship to be of the highest level of professionalism. Are you, by any chance, referring to anything that happened last night? Well, I'm, I, mean, I think you know the answer to that. Uh, and here, uh, I was thinking you never arrived at all. <laughs> Actually, I was praying you didn't, but perhaps you did. Well, I'm... Uh, what? Oh. Let me level with you, Mr. Malone. I have a little alcohol problem completely, completely under control. Except for those rare occasions when I get a little nervous. And, and I was a little nervous about our meeting last night and about the prospects of joining LGT. And, and so I permitted myself the teensiest class of champagne and the next thing I knew daylight was streaming through those awful print curtains and I just assumed you never came to my room since your knocking would surely have awakened me but judging from your manner you did come and, and I, I slept through your knocking? Well. I am terribly, terribly sorry. You had one glass of champagne, and that's all you remember. I'm afraid so. How terribly rude of me. Oh, well, um, let me listen. That's a uh, medical condition. I certainly understand. And Rob, I have never, ever let this interfere with my work. And I never will. Hmm. Everyone makes mistakes until you come to work here. And then you can't make any. That's just a little joke. Oh. Hmm? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Oh, ah. that's a little joke. Yeah. Well, you are a dear man. Oh. And 
I do hope this won't affect our deal. Why should it? I mean, there are a few deal points that we still have to resolve, but uh, I think we can work it out. Well, I'm going to go light a candle and hold a good thought. You didn't really knock on my door last night, did you? Uh, just tapped. Anybody could have missed it. You know, why, why, uh, C cup? D cup? Double D. Double D. Double D? Yeah. You know, hey, look, you know, look over there. What? Where? Table to the right of Sue and Melinda. Jesus. And there's a couple for you. I cannot believe he is talking to her after what she did to him. Well, you know what Ingrid Bergman said? What Ingrid Bergman said? The secret to success in Hollywood is having a short memory. Short memory, memory yeah. Oh, That's so good. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Chad. You know what? I wasn't even sure you were going to show up. What, lunch with Lori Volpone? Well, Are you kidding know, honey, me? I don't know, I think I might still have a heart on because of the Krasnikov. Oh, it's water under the bridge. I, I hope mean, so. I hope so. Look what happened. I know. Hmm. To Parker. To Parker. Yes. <laughs> so we're going to take a run at your Tuesday night. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, I'm sure you are. <laughs> hey, come on, what's bothering you? Nothing, nothing. Yeah. Why, do I seem angry or something? No, I just, you ordered the burger, and it's red meat for lunch, so I thought... Oh, well, you know, I like a little animal fat now and then, so... Oh, yeah. Mm. A little corporate infighting? Yeah, big time. Hey, the business has gotten rougher. Tell me about huh? it. Tell me about it. There's a whole new breed coming up after us these days, and they're completely unprofessional. Yeah. Not to mention ruthless. You know the type. Business school commandos out of Wharton via the mailroom, William Morris. I mean, there's no morals whatsoever there. I know. I know. What is that? It's crazy. I mean, this woman they just brought into my department. Christ, yeah. she has no life outside of the fucking network. She's tireless. Oh. I mean, Casey... That's her name, okay? Casey Lennox. She got laid on us by the affirmative action Gestapo. Oh, no, you got hit, huh? Oh, my God. Unbelievable. It's unreal. But, Chad, I'm only telling you this because I know you won't say anything. You accusing me of integrity? <laughs> 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 oh, um, God. Oh, no, Casey so Lennox, I know her. Didn't she uh, land gold or silver when everybody thought she was going to ABC? Yeah, yeah. No, I'm not saying she doesn't get results. I'm just saying she's tough to live with, right. you know? I mean... But, of course, the men love her. Oh, yeah. She'll do anything for them. Right. <laughs> oh, my God, I'm sounding like such a bitch, no, don't I? No, you don't. Yes, mm -hmm. I do. I just, I can't believe it, Chad. The network is about to offer her a long-term contract. <laughs> oh, so she doesn't have one. No, like mm. I said, she's brand new. Right. Mm. Oh, well, forget it. I mean, my problems, it's just, I'm going on and on and on oh. and on, really. I, you know what? I have a meeting at, uh, yeah, I gotta go. Oh, come on. You barely touched your burger. Come on. Well, you know, I vented. I feel better. It's back to cottage oh. cheese. <laughs> so, listen, I'll take care of this, okay, sweetie? I already spoke to Norman. Thank you. Oh, Thanks. I'm sorry for no. all this, like, blabbing oh. on and on. Come on, what a friend. Oh, you're such a buddy. You really oh. are. Mwah. I did Mwah. I'll call you. Okay. We'll see you. It's Chad, is Barry in? Barry, listen, uh, you know you were talking about upgrading your uh, development? Well, I think there's some major talent we can poach from LGT. Yeah, and not only is she good, but she's the right color. Uh-huh, yeah, but we gotta move fast. Audrey, honey. Oh, sw sweetie, Mr. Callis, one of Daddy's attorneys, is here with Parker's will. Hi. Hi. Oh, no, I'm healing. Oh. Uh, hon, do you remember we got a copy of Parker's will from his lawyers? Well, Mr. Callis is here to go through it with us. Mm -hmm. okay. Oh, please, please, call me Brent. <laughs> Brent, well, shall we sit down? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <clears throat> so, <laughs> Brent, have you been with the firm long? Mm -hmm. Oh, just a couple of months. University of Winnipeg Law School. Mother? Mother, have you seen this little kind of greenish bird out here in the backyard? Um, a greenish bird? No, yeah. no, hon, I haven't. Yeah, look, 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 look. He's sitting on the diving board, and he's watching me like, like he knows me. Uh-huh. 
So, uh, mm. Brent, have you had a chance to look over the will? It's uh, essentially a very simple document. Very few beneficiaries. Pretty. Pretty. Apparently, he was Pretty. estranged from his mother, and he makes a point here of leaving nothing to his brother and sister. I'm here. Uh, there's Wait, an antique car that he's leaving to some grip on uh, oh, Parker's no, pals. No, no, he's flying away. Mother. Audrey, please. Where are you going? Audrey, could Where you come he going? Over? Audrey, come over here, please. But she, you know, she's having a really rough time. Oh, I, I understand, yeah. Uh, what, if, what if that was Parker trying to give me a sign? Audrey, Parker is not trying to give you any sign. What if? What if he was trying to reach me through the bird? Okay, go, Parker! Go, move on. Parker! Yeah, absolutely. I'm here. Uh, this brings us Parker! to the final two items in the will, which is uh, the cash, I'm totaling some 17 million. Please come back. Excuse me. Did hmm. you say 17 million? Hmm. <sighs> uh, let's see here. Uh, oh. Oh, well, this is... This is unusual. Huh. Well, it appears Parker was very sentimental. Y yeah, mm -hmm. he was. His first success as a stand-up was at an open mic night at a little comedy club on Bleecker Street in New York called Funny Bone. Oh, Funny Bone. <laughs> Funny Bone. <laughs> yeah, so he's including them in his will. Well, that's very oh. sweet. What did he leave them? Um, <clears throat> 17 million. I'm sorry, what? Well, yeah, he's, he's establishing the Parker Meridian Foundation for Comedy. See, with an annual uh, televised award show to be broadcast from this club, which the money will sustain in perpetuity. That is wrong. That is so wrong. Oh, well, uh, Cecilia, I don't write them, I just read them. This girl devoted her whole life to making that man happy, and, and he left her nothing? Ah, uh, well, let's see here. Um, <gasps> oh, no, 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 th there is something here. It seems that Parker had a quantity of his is, um, s sperm. His sperm frozen and stored in a cryogenic lab in Torrance. And he's leaving Audrey a three-month option on using it. You've got to be kidding. Uh, well, if she chooses not to become pregnant within that time, the option goes to Juliet Binoche, who also has three months, and then it goes to, um... Heather Locklear. Well, that about does it for me. That shithead! That, that selfish, egomaniacal bastard! I'm just gonna go ahead and let myself out here. Oh, sweetie, I am, I am so sorry. I'm really sorry. I am that prick. prick. I am, I'm so sorry. No, no. No. Mother, don't you see? What? The sperm, it's the sign. It's the sign that I've been looking for. Oh, God, what are you talking about? It's Parker. Parker wants to be reborn. And I'm going to be the conduit. <sighs> I've got Lori Volpone on, too. Lori, this is a surprise. Last time you called me, you said I was an evil shit. <laughs> you are an evil shit, Brad. Oh, my God, I shouldn't even be telling you this, but I can't think of anyone else who will enjoy this as much as you will. Lori, this conversation is boring on emotional. Brad, Brad, you can't tell this to anyone, okay? One word, and you're deported. <laughs> I just got Casey shipped off to NBC. That's impossible. How? By telling Chad to avoid her like the plague. Brilliant. I told him she was a killer, completely unprincipled. Oh, it's like catnip to Chad. I know, no, he was drooling. I bet he was. So tell me, do you feel at all conflicted about this information? I mean, you have been seeing Casey. It was just business, Lori. Was it? Absolutely. I never mix business with pleasure. Really? Cross my heart. I'm glad. So, Brad. How about tonight? Love it. Good night. <laughs> Hi. There are probably about a thousand more subtle ways of doing this, and each of them had their merit, but I thought I'd just go for the kick in the gut. Bring it on. NBC called. They want me. Really? They practically threw themselves at me. I mean, I would have been embarrassed, except... Except you're not capable of it? <laughs> <laughs> it's more money. It's more responsibility. And as fond as I am of LGT, it's just not NBC, is it? No. 
It's not. Oh, Case, gosh, I don't know what to say. Congrats. But you know what's funny, though? It, I would have thought they'd go after you. Oh, well, Case, I don't think I look quite as good on the affirmative action report. Uh, no, you don't. I know, it's too bad. Well, we still have to negotiate my deal, you know. But as soon as that's done, I'll be on my merry way. Well, don't let the door hit you on the way out. Thanks for everything, Lori. Sure thing, Case. Oh, oh, oh. I forgot one more thing. Fuck you. <laughs> right back at you, girl. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Oh, my God. Rob, do you need anything before I go? No, thanks. I just want to watch this director's cut, and then I'm heading home myself. So I'll see you tomorrow. Night. Yeah. It's me, Savannah. That wife of yours out of the house. Oh, I am feeling the need. Whew, there's a cue if I ever heard one. Pamela. Congratulations, Rob. Oh. We're in bed together. In bed? I signed my deal. Ah. I'm glad that's over. Okay, now. The proper way to uncork a bottle of champagne is to hold the cork and you turn the bottle. Champagne? No, thank you. Oh. Doing your Gary Cooper? Strong, silent, self-denying? So this business of blacking out and saying that you don't remember anything was just... An aphrodisiac. Sometimes, Rob, before you get into bed together, a little foreplay doesn't hurt. Oh, come on. Stop looking so fucking scandalized. I made a pass at you. I didn't threaten your kids. I didn't poison your dog. No, no, you didn't. Pamela. No. No, I didn't. And tomorrow... Tomorrow, I'm going to announce my move on a satellite feed that goes out to 63 markets. Your affiliates are going to be thrilled to their tits that you're finally going to get some numbers for that dead in the water morning show of yours. Isn't that lovely? You're missing a great piece of ass. No doubt. I would have fucked your brains out. Ooh. Who's that? Just a, um, someone we're considering for a role in a miniseries. Mmm. Gorgeous. Well, you think so? Mmm. Makes me drip. Mm. What a waste. Yeah. Yeah, oh, Marty, yeah. What? What? She what? Fucking Barry Berman. I Okay, just, I know, uh, what's it gonna take? Okay, put some numbers together, come on down the hall, and I'm, I want a competing offer on the table tonight. Yeah, okay, we'll order up some sandwiches. Yeah, okay. <laughs> About. Yeah, I gotta go. Hey, who's been working out there, Steve-O? Good morning, Jim. Hi. Oh, thanks. Oh, my God, is that uh, a new hairstyle? Oh, it's not really new. I love it. It's a keeper. <laughs> hey, Schmelcom. How are you? Come on, I did it all. Schmelcom, Schmelcom. Are you okay? Yes, honey, I'm perfect. Why? And you heard what happened last yes, night? I did. Good for yes, you. I did. Isn't that great? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Good for you, Lord. Yes, 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 yes. I'll see you at lunch, okay? How are you? Huh? Oh, Rob, hey! Yeah. Oh, Rob. Yeah. You know how some mornings are just perfect? 
Um, yeah, I looked out at the smog this morning. I thought, you know, having a little texture in the air is kind of pretty. Yeah. You know? Listen, I've, I've thought it over, and I think we ought to test grass. You mean it? Yeah. Oh, Rob, that's great. Yeah. Oh, my God, what convinced you? Uh, market research. See, I told you. Well, yeah, listen, Lori, I tried to reach you last night. Who's redecorating? Morning. Um, Hello. Well, you did Hi. hear what happened last night, didn't you? Oh, isn't it disgusting? Those fuckers at NBC. <laughs> I mean, we go to all that trouble of investing in someone like Casey, and what happens? Well, I'm glad you, uh, you see the problem. Oh, my God, how can I not? No, I was just afraid that maybe you had some issues with her. Rob, please. I'm a team player. What? Mm. I am. Everybody knows I am. Yeah. Oh, Rob, I'll just have to work twice as hard to fill the void. Well, I appreciate Hi, your attitude, but, um, you know, we did pull it out of the fire. Pull it out of the, uh, huh? The fire? Yeah, we negotiated till 2 in the morning, but we managed to work things out. Oh, well, uh, work what out? Casey's deal. What? Yeah, and it wasn't easy. Brad Advale backed a truck up at NBC, and of course we had to match the numbers. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? Uh... And we had to offer her a vice presidency, you know. Uh -huh. Lori, I tried to call you last night, but it got late, and I kept getting your machine. It... It's great. Actually, I think this is really going to work out well. Uh, it's great. It's great. Absolutely. Okay. I'm... I mean, I, I put her right down the hall from you, because oh. I need you two to work together closely. Okay? Right, right. Okay. Oh, and we have a uh, celebration lunch at the Palm at 1, so I'll see you there. Okay. Rob, hmm? the Hollywood Reporter's holding for you? Okay, I'll be right there. You know, I think we have a shot of page 1 on this tomorrow morning. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 It's going to be a bumpy night. Yeah, we had the